Hi everyone! Welcome to episode 61 of Unneal the Needs. Hi everyone! Welcome, welcome or welcome back to my channel Anne Judenitz. I am Annina. You are the most welcome here and I am a Finnish knitwear designer and a knitter and um, this is the space where I talk about my knitting. I just did vlogmas um, this year so uh, there ha there's so many new faces, faces over here so warm welcome and thank you so much if you are a returning viewer because i know vlogmas is not for everyone so i will be showing showing some um stuff that i've already shown in my vlogmas episodes today's agenda it is uh to recap the year 2023 and with me it, it means that I want to share all the patterns that I have released this year and also share a little bit what I've been knitting or what I uh, have knitted this year and I will just show you a couple of things that uh, I recently finished or uh, things that I would like to finish in the very near future. But I know there's a lot of things to talk about today so let's get started. I have a lot of uh, patterns released this year, even though I'm still, I am still um, finding my place, <laughs> if you can say that, in the knitting designer industry. Or I don't really, I don't really know where I fit in because um, I've been trying to double on everything, and I'm knitting at, at the same time because I have mainly talking to do today, so not so much showing. Um, yeah, so I work four days a week as an uh, optical salesperson and my job has been quite demanding this year and I also have two small children. Um, I have boys uh, age of four and five. Uh, the other one turns six very soon in January and you know it's quite challenging to balance the the home life <laughs> the family life and and your work life and i do have one day a week to work on my design work but um quite often it means that if i have errands to run errands to run uh, i will do them do them on that day so it, it always takes away um uh, of the time that i have I don't have energy in the evenings when my kids go to bed. So I've talked about this. <laughs> I've talked about this already previously that sometimes I struggle uh, to balance and not to compare. And, and also um, I have to make some changes into my, um, into my company. I do have a company or it's like, a, I don't know if you have, something like that in other countries but we have this um light entrepreneurship so you can um, have your own um company number i don't know like a i don't know tax number <laughs> but um uh, it's sort of it's a service that you buy and all that but it doesn't it doesn't uh, allow me to add any um foreign um well it already <laughs> became a little bit too deep anyway i'm struggling uh to find the right way to do this because uh the, the way that i'm doing it now it doesn't work so i need to find an accountant and i need to figure out what's the what's the next move so i've been stalling stalling with that but now i need to crack on that doesn't interest you so I'll just move on <laughs> and um, let's go and have a look what I did um, manage to publish this year. So the beginning of the year was a little bit slower. I did, um, I published my first pattern in Feb February and it was uh, Lotus Lake socks. And 
they have been quite popular actually and it surprises me sometimes because um i don't know i do love them but it's it's a pattern that only has one one size which is not my way of doing things usually but uh the lace pattern didn't really well it's an excuse i didn't want to do the extra effort and i i don't think that i will do these one size uh patterns anymore but the lotus lake socks are very pretty i'm actually currently making a new pair and yeah so th that was the first pattern that i have released and it has been surprisingly successful this year and then there was a little gap uh i was working on summer designs and i need to see if i lost the stitch nope um i released my tankard t which was released uh in the beginning of june and it was uh my most successful pattern at that at the time uh i'd never sold more than 100 copies in the opening weekend and that was that was the first time that i did and i was super happy about it and yeah it felt good to be noticed and i i i have worn that t-shirt a lot i I made it in Drops Bell and that's a very affordable yarn which is a linen and cotton and viscose blend. It did grow quite a lot uh, width and it did shorten a bit so I I have plan that if I if I find something nice uh, some some nice yarn I will redo the uh, the, the tankar for next summer because that was something that I wore a lot because it's very comfortable uh, it's boxy oversized and yeah a lot of you also liked it so that makes me that makes me really really happy uh, Tankati uh, is it is um, size inclusive in a way that I still need to do some changes when I have time because I don't want to recommend so much ease since um it doesn't um uh, i did the change when i was doing my tankar sweater which is which i will talk about a little bit later and i need to go back and do the changes to the tea when i do have time but um it comes in uh, nine sizes i believe or ten i can't even remember anymore but uh, this end of the year has completely erased all my memory um, but anyway Ankati, that was my second pattern and the next one i was in a kick with <laughs> with the summer tees i really loved the shape so i wanted to create something a little bit more feminine and since my lotus lake socks were um uh, very uh, popular and i wanted to i wanted to create something with lace i just took that same lace pattern because i loved it myself and i just flipped it around and i did it did a little shuffling of the stitches and then it worked just read from other direction and this is my lotus lake tea that is also a pattern that i want to recreate for next summer because i just love wearing these t-shirts that come up to your elbow um it's very comfortable where nothing floppy is hanging out <laughs> and uh it's short enough that it feels airy and the yarn which was katia tensel cotton yarn uh i really loved it and the only problem is that it's, it's it is white and i am a mess <laughs> so <laughs> a white t-shirt uh for me it's not very it's not very comfortable to wear because i have to constantly be aware if i'm dropping something or or something like that and then it was socks it was a uh, fall of socks knit along which i did the second time a row in a row and the blumage socks were the first pattern i released for 
my fall of socks knit along and those were something that i created the lace pattern for uh didn't find it anywhere so i had a a vision in my, my head and i did uh translate it i was just trying trying out some different techniques and this is what i landed on and yeah i really love the detail on the back of the leg because there's a ribbing that slides down from the or actually they are worked top uh toe up so you work the the heel flap first and then you start the ribbing which kind of starts straight from the heel flap so i really love that detail and it goes up to the cuff as well and the next pattern i feel like i'm rushing but i still have quite a few things to show you so i'll just go through these things um my next pattern release was the tankar sweater and that was also something that i just wanted for myself and i have worn that sweater a lot it's actually um on the um chair <laughs> it's right there because i've been wearing it over the christmas time and it's a very fun uh color and i love I love wearing uh I love wearing a hand knit sweater and it is a DK DK weight sweater and I did modify the neckline from the T to be a little bit narrower because I felt like as a as a sweater the boat neck is not very handy to have such a you know wide wide uh, neckline so I did bring it in a little bit and um, I used a uh, yarn from Sayevul, which is a, a Finnish dyer duo, and they offered me the yarn for this design. It was a BFL DK sock yarn, and it has held up very well, very well, even though I've been wearing it quite a few times. And that was actually the only... Uh, long sleeved sweater for this year and i have since then released a um, couple more socks and a shawl so the next release was in october and it was my coastland shawl this shawl was inspired by the yarn and it is the pearl so holy and quill i had had uh, received a gift from a friend and i wanted to use it something to something that was mindless and something that i can uh, take when i'm traveling and i did travel in april and this is when this project project started um it is a three skein project so it's a rather big <laughs> shawl but it's mindless lace. Um, when you establish the, the lace pattern and you get the hang of it, um, I think it's pretty simple, simple lace pattern. It's an eight row repeat and it's just 21 stitches. So for me at least, I'm now uh, making a second one. And for me at least, it's, it's a very nice and relaxing project. Um, you start with a lot of stitches and then you decrease all the way up to the or yeah up to the tip and then it creates this huge huge shawl and there are two different uh, size options in the pattern one that uses whole three skeins and then the other one that is a little bit smaller not a huge amount because I really wanted to have like a you know a proper shawl it is substantial <laughs> shawl and you can wrap it and you can feel very cozy and and um that's that's a mission accomplished <laughs> and i really enjoyed the the process of it and i know other people have also enjoyed a lot uh making my coastland shawl so so yeah that was my first ever shawl pattern that i released in october The next uh, two pattern releases were 
um, sock patterns. The other one was Wandering Nomad socks. It was my second pattern for the Fall of Socks knit along. And those were, I really wanted to go back to my roots and uh, uh, I have started my designer career, if you, if you will, uh, by making colorwork socks. And that's my first love. That's uh, how I started knitting five years ago or six years ago, actually. My son is now turning six, so it, it has to be six years ago. And I wanted to create something that felt really uh, close to home, <laughs> if you will. And this is what I came up with. The names, I'm not very good at coming up with names. Something is stealing my eye. Uh, but I have luckily a great community that always <laughs> helps me out. So Wandering Nomad was also a suggestion from, from a friend and that was the great fit for this pattern. And another pattern that I released, I didn't release it myself. It was a commission for the fiber company. It was the festive mistletoe socks. And this is a pattern that I created for the fiber company and they own the pattern and they sell the pattern. It's not, uh, it's not for me to sell, but I really love the pattern. It's, it's festive, but it's not like in your face Christmassy. So that's, that's something that I really enjoyed working on. I actually worked, uh, up those socks over the Easter time. So it was a very long wait <laughs> from the, from the start to, to actually, um, publishing, publishing the pattern. And my last published pattern for this year was my Yulgupa socks, which I have to say a huge, huge, huge thank you because it blows me away. It's still selling every day. And, um, well, it is <laughs> between Christmas and New Year's, everyone is still in their Christmas spirit. And, um, yeah, I published this pattern on the 1st of December and it has been the most successful pattern of my career. And that makes me super happy and it gives me hope and it gives me motivation for the next year because Sometimes I've been wondering whether or it's it's hard to find the place uh, to have the energy to do everything. And when you're struggling with, with the energy, then it translates to your work. And when it translates to your work, it feels forced and it doesn't like my tanka tea. It was it was the sudden burst of inspiration. I was. I first tried it, uh, tried to start it with fingering weight yarn and then I quickly realized that it doesn't really give the same effect that I want and it was a project that I was I just couldn't put down. I was like <laughs> I don't know. I was driven by the inspiration and it it was like I think I did the whole t-shirt in 4 days or something like that from from designing it to finishing the object and I was writing it while I was doing it and I was creating it also before I even finished it. So that's what I'm looking for, uh, for, for next year. I have so many ideas, but so little time and, and I am finding, <laughs> finding the balance, how to be a good mom and a good employee and also work uh, on the things that I really want to work on and not compare myself to others because everyone's situation is different and I'm doing the best that I can with with circumstances that I have but sometimes I I can be a little bit hard on myself because I feel like I need to do as well as the other people are doing and but <laughs> my life is what it is and i don't have the opportunity to work on you know days in a week i have a couple of hours in a week and 
that's that's the reality that is here and that's the reality for me uh today so i need to work with that and not let it not let it bring me down uh, and the comparison is just the worst so i'm trying to stay stay true to myself and just follow the joy and follow the inspiration because that's when the best <laughs> the best um uh outcome or the best results are are uh coming when when i follow the joy so that's my goal for next year i am definitely going to follow the joy and i'm going to <laughs> i'm going to sort out the business side of it so that it's easier for me to get everything uh easily sorted and get some help for for that part of the deal so um i don't have to worry about that but those were all the designs um if you are familiar to my channel if you've been here before you know that i knit a lot and i did a little i did a little um hmm, not the poll but i did a little tally uh of what i've been knitting this year but before we go into that I wanted to show you, I now realize that I forgot to take the, the sweater. I will put a picture here. I finished my stepdaughter's sweater. This is uh, one of my, my very scrappy sweaters. And it was a sweater that used up two full skeins and a ton of leftovers. And she loved it. She actually just got it today. She came just yesterday, yesterday evening, and we had a little... Christmas now the whole family's home and she got to open her Christmas presents uh, this morning so it fits and it looks great and she loved it and she gave, got <laughs> she gave me two thumbs up so I think that's a success so here you go uh, the sweater that I've been working on for quite some time and um, I wanted to show you that uh, if you didn't see my vlogmas uh i want to show you my um advent socks these are the socks that i was working on throughout the december and they are actually very scrappy socks so this is a scrappy advent sock uh, project i had a poll on my instagram each day which color is going to be next and i had this jar full of little teeny tiny two gram scraps and two grams is actually what it needs to create two stripes for my socks so here they are very bright and very scrappy and i am actually going to make this a, a knit along for for next for next year so scrappy advent, advent sock uh, knit along is coming next year because not everyone can afford uh, to have a yarn advent calendar but we we might have some scraps we can use so even though if you don't have 24 different colors i'm actually having a couple of the the colors repeat like this lime green is repeating this electric blue is repeating the burgundy one is repeating and so forth and uh yeah you can put all the scraps in the back and then pull pull them out or you can ask your instagram friends to vote and for me this was the most fun project of of the month because i i love the interaction part so much even though they are not looking like they would be if i would have chosen the the order the colors would be the same because this is what i had but um, but uh the order is not what i would have would have done but i think that's the element of surprise and the fun in 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 an advent calendar that you don't know what's to come so that was so fun and that will definitely come back next year and today it is uh, saturday the 30th of uh, december so there's still today and tomorrow and i am hoping to finish my swike swike sweater finally so 
I am now, there's a little bit of the, the other sleeve as well. So first of all, I was making the sleeves up to here, uh, two at a time magic loop. So I I did all the decreases that I I was supposed to do. But then I was like, I was constantly detangling the yarn and the cord felt too long and uh, everything was a struggle. So I was like, okay, why do I keep doing this to myself? Why don't I just transfer it to a smaller circular? Because uh, this is going to be like a puff sleeve. So it's straight. I did some decreases like until my... Um, what is it called? Bicep. <laughs> Until my bicep. And then I'll just do it straight and then cinch it in for the cuff. And um, yeah, it has been working up so much quicker. Uh, this is where I ended up with the second one. So I've done last night and this morning, I've done quite a few centimeters. And here I have a marker. I measured it and I need 10 more centimeters from this marker. So 10 more centimeters and then the decrease round and the cuff. And then I will have, and then I will have the sleeves done. And I'm hoping because today we are just going to be at home. And tomorrow I want to take out all the Christmas decorations because when the new year comes, that's when the house needs to be <laughs> without all the decorations. Um, so we're taking out the Christmas tomorrow and maybe do a little clean up. So, uh, other, otherwise I do have a little bit of knitting time, I believe. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to finish up this spike sweater by Gaitlin Hunter. And it has been a whip since to September 22. So one and a half years now. Not quite, but almost. And um, it's about a time for me to wear it. So that's my goal for today and tomorrow. And also, um, my husband was asking for a warmer hat because it is rather cold already. It's minus 12 degrees today. But... It's going to be down to minus 25 um, by Tuesday. So I have a couple of days <laughs> before I need to finish a hat for him. I started a hat inspired by the Oslo hat, but I didn't purchase the pattern because I don't like the decreases that ha uh, that pattern has. And I have a couple of hat pat patterns. I know my gauge with uh, 4.5 or 4 millimeter needles. So I cast on a number based on my own hat pattern and I'm going to do the decreases from my Vohveli hat, which has like a central um, central double decrease. So it's like a crisp, crisp line instead of that what Oslo hat has. So I know how to make it. I didn't purchase the pattern because I don't want to use the pattern um, as it is. So I thought there's no point, but it's inspired it's a stockinette hat with a double folded brim and this is where I'm at. So I've done uh, a brim. I made it to my liking. I don't know how long it is in the pattern, but I don't care because this is not the hat. I wanted a nice white. My husband asked for a warm hat, so he really wants his ears and his um, neck to be covered or not neck, but like the skull part of his head. So. The brim is now thick brim, 10 centimeters. And then I have now do all the jiggling. And now I need to, now I need to just do the body of the hat. Now it's all wonky. I did. I turned it inside out and then I turned it back again with the wrong side. So now the yarn is all tangled up. Anyway, I'll just, I'll just put it here. <laughs> I don't need to do it right now. So that is also something I really need to work on. Maybe today, tomorrow, if I get bored with my swag. And uh, 
I'm assuming either one of these will get finished by the new year. So I will have then uh, finished 57 items if I will finish finish one of these things. Um, I would like to share what I have what I have made this year and I will put these I I have done a picture each month or this collage every month of the objects that I finished. I've averaged about five excuse me <laughs> four or five finished objects object each month. And um yeah I thought that I would give you a little details and this is not to brag or this is not to make anyone feel bad. Knitting is my fuel and knitting is what keeps me alive if you say if you can say that. Um, knitting is what brings me joy and knitting is my way to de-stress. I knit every single day. There has not been a day that I have not knit even um, when I was having my tonsils removed I did knit before the surgery and they were even asking if I would like to take my knitting to the surgery or to the OR room, but I didn't. Um, I didn't do that, but I just like, this is just purely, this is what I did. This is what I did. Uh, no need to make anyone feel bad and I don't want to stress anyone out or I don't want to brag. So. There you have it. <laughs> but I thought it's interesting for you to know. Um, I did finish uh, 15 garments or sweaters this year. So I'm counting t-shirts as well as uh, I've done a couple of kid size uh, sweaters as well. So they are all included. And eight of those 15 was for someone else and seven was for me. And I love knitting socks and I made 28 pairs of socks this year and four pairs was for me and 24 pairs was for someone else. That's going to change next year because I am planning on doing a pair a month for myself and I'm going to fill a box of socks and I will gift myself next Christmas a box of socks and that will be 12 new pairs for me. Um, I did 10 other accessories, including cowls and hats, and six for someone else and four for me. And then I did two huge shawls. One was the Koli shawl, and that was for my mom's 60th birthday. And the other one was the Coastland shawl, and I actually already gifted that as well, because I felt like the beige uh, or the the peachy color washed me out a little bit so uh, I'm making myself a burgundy one and I think that's a color that I enjoy more so I gifted that as a Christmas present as well so two shawls and those were gifted too so I've come to realize that I do not prefer but I love knitting for other people that brings me joy and I don't know I don't do that because I have to do it but because I want to do it and that's just who I am and I don't feel too precious about my samples either I always have some good pictures taken and I have different uh, like different angles and and as as I am a person that likes to think the environmental things as well, I quite often find my kids' clothes from from uh, secondhand markets, and they are hand me downs. And it's not because of the money; it's because I just like I just like to be um, environmentally conscious, if you can say that. So. Um, I don't want to collect a huge pile of samples that never gets worn. I I have pictures that will last a lifetime, but I want the items to actually be enjoyed. So 
I have been gifting a lot of my samples too and I'm very happy to I'm very happy to give them to people that actually wear them. So so that's that's my ideology behind my um items. I don't want to collect a million sweaters or a million pairs of socks and I'm not precious about my my designs either. So I wear the socks and they they wear down, but that's fine because you can always need more and the items are meant to be worn. At least I think so. So that's that. Wow, uh, that was a very, <laughs> very quick and very informative package. Um, I have one more thing that I would like to share. And this is my Christmas Eve Gaston. And this is also the first pair for my next year's Christmas presents. So I'm a, I started a pair of socks and these yarns were part of a yarn swap that I did with Rebecca, which is the Moving Stitches. She lives in Spain and uh, she knows my tastes so well. And she brought me these colors, brought, sent over. <laughs> um, so there's Nervous Fiber is this brown one. And then I can't remember the dyer of these minis, but I decided to create these stripy socks and showcase all the yarn or all the sock yarn she sent me. So that's where I'm at. I have turned the heel. I've done all the gusset, gusset decreases and I just absolutely love these. Um, I did a garter heel flap and I, I did 15 row, 15 rounds uh, of each color. So these are going to be fantastic and they will get done in January. And that's, that's going to be my first, first, um, pair of socks for next year. Uh, I won't be taking those socks into use. I will collect them for a whole year and then I will take, now I have two pairs still untouched, uh, my painting bricks socks and my wandering nomad socks and those I will crack crack on now and I will take them and use them and love them and so I have two fresh pairs actually three since I have these so I have three new pairs uh to get me through this winter and then I will I will make some more I would like to know what is your first cast on for the year what will you do or do you have already plans uh because i have already planned my next uh next project and i ordered some mohair to go with the yarn i i already have and i am going to knit the bunyol sweater by camijo knit camilla and she came out with this pattern quite recently and she was kindly enough to give the pattern so I have this hand dyed merino which I bought from a d-stash and I did purchase some Langley's mohair to go with it so I will be I will be casting that on as soon as the yarn arrives but my goal for January is definitely finish up some lang languishing whips. It worked out so well in this fall. I did smash out quite a few lingering whips. So that's something that I plan to do. And um, I need to do my yarn inventory for this year. I have done it three times already. And I think that's, that's a job for the 1st of January because the, the numbers have got grown each year. I have actually, oh, now I can, yeah, I can, I have my iPad here. Um, I can tell you, I'm a girl with lists. I love a list. I love to add numbers and, and I like to do, I like to do inventory and I love, I, I'm crazy, I, I know, but, um, 
uh, let's see. So January 2021, uh, my stash was 12 kilos, 827 grams. And I also count whips because all the yarn is included until it's out of the stash, out of the whip pile, then it's out. So I always uh, also weigh my whips, which there are a lot of. So 2021 January, there was a little less than 13 kilos. 2022 January, there was 16 kilos, 774 grams. And yeah, <laughs> that, that, was, that was four more kilos. And then this year, I wasn't going, I wasn't that bad. Uh, my stash only grew about uh, 1,000 kilo, 1,000 grams. So I had 17 kilos, 847 grams, which means I just went up one kilo, which is nothing if you compare that I have increased my design works and I've, I've bought more yarn to design with and all that jazz. She says to herself, <laughs> I know it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot, but I love to, I love to know what I have. And I love to, I also have a list of all the sweaters quantities that I have. So I know what I have. And when I use it up, I will then remove it from the list. But yeah, I don't know if this was interesting at all. But I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> if you are still there, maybe you did. Um, thank you so much for this year. Thank you so much for tuning into my, my channel. And thank you so much for subscribing, all the likes and all the comments. This channel has grown, uh, I think, well, it, it's, it's not growing like um, explosively, but it's it's been growing a lot and we passed 4,000 during Vlogmas, which is amazing. <laughs> and uh, I thank you so, so much for being there and to listening to my rambles and and all the lovely comments, because that's that's what that's what that's what keeps me going. And I love to make this as a journal for myself, but I also but I also love to make it because I know that there are so many of you who enjoy watching my videos. Thank you for being here and uh, I wish you very, very happy and healthy new year and um, happy crafting. Bye.